Welcome to the podcast where good trivia gets rewarded and lies are punished. But will we catch the lies? This is What's the Fact. Never, ever again will I catch the lies. Uh, my name's Ryan Witzel. This is Warren Robertson. And thanks for joining us. You're most very welcome to the podcast. What was that? That was Irish. You know that we lost half of our viewers now. <laughs> They're so offended yeah. by your terrible <laughs> Irish accent. They're just gone. All, all, sorry, I said they. I'm Same. glad that half of our listeners is more than one. <laughs> I've got another uh, colleague from, from work who listens. She has us on repeat even while she's sleeping. Oh, she really? Wo she woke up the other night and heard my voice playing in her room. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness she believes that it was on the TV, eh? <laughs> it was Fee. Felicity. Fee. Yeah. yeah good, good news. Um, so this one's quite a weird one. Yeah. Because um, when Deeds first proposed it, I didn't think there'd be nearly enough on it he said he said he doesn't want rags to riches stories he wants no. the other way around he wants riches to rags stories how morbid is that i know we should <laughs> let some light into his little dark room there it's, <laughs> it's starting to affect his psyche i want riches to rags yeah he's Come down a bit of angry man bit of bit of going, angry going man. down in life down yeah yeah, yeah. But I mean, listen, we should probably take the rubbish bin out of his, his <laughs> cave now because it, it's been there for six weeks and it is starting to smell a little bit in there. <laughs> yeah, I can't help the atmosphere shining. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's clearly bumming him out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, tur it turns out that there have been lots of people who, who made a lot of money and then, and then lost it. And I'm not even, I mean, I'm not even talking about people who, you know, like Bernie Madoff or, you know, who, who made themselves rich. Mm illegally ah uh, you know I'm, yeah. I'm not even i'm thinking about people who who earned their money legitimately and then and then kind of squandered it yeah sort of sad although i mean to be honest there's a lot of very wealthy people now that i would love to see go bankrupt <laughs> i mean I, I am thrilled to tears watching elon musk every day um you know he's he owes another one and a half billion or something at the end of this month that he's got to pay an interest payments towards his his twitter purchase and yet he's lost 200 billion in value and, and Tesla even yeah, struggling yeah. there. So hey? now, now he can either sell more Tesla shares, or you know he's going to have to do what the rest of us do and start selling drugs under a bridge. He's got to start investing in diesel at Escom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's be Get a great. coal contract through Gwede Montage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's exactly what needs to happen. Well, yeah. He was he was South African, so he's 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 yeah, half he's in. Him. He's got the papers. Yeah, he's even he's, they were even in the mining industry. I mean, emeralds. Really? Yeah, emeralds. They don't burn quite as well as coal, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll give it a try now. We're at that point. We'll try and burn anything here. Gwetty's <laughs> Gwetty's got his oaks chucking old second-hand furniture on the Kusili <laughs> furnace now. <laughs> ah man, yeah, this is dire. In fact, we're we're supposed to be getting load shedding in like yeah. an hour, so we should probably. It's uh, it's an incentive to hurry the. F exactly, hurry exactly, up. exactly. So we talk about. Uh, riches to rags. I'll start. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with somebody who maybe maybe some people know, some people don't know. But he was a member of the Rat Pack back in the day. Yeah. Pretty much like the most famous group of entertainers of their era. Uh, Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sammy Davis Jr. Uh, he was said to have made in the neighborhood of $50 million over the Jeez. course of his lifetime. Jeez. But yeah, when he died in 1990 at the age of 64 from throat cancer... Uh, he owed the IRS millions of dollars in unpaid taxes, so he uh, he died bankrupt. Um, oh, that's very sad. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you think that's sad, wait up. Because <laughs> look, the guy, the guy. I mean, listen, among many things, he was he was very famous, but he had this car accident where, you know, in an old car where you didn't wear your seatbelt, and then his his eye went on the indicator or something, and it oh, my word. gashed out his, his one eye. Oh, my word. So he had a glass eye for most of his life. And then um, and then he suffered a lot of racism, no matter how famous he was. You know, he wasn't allowed to enter the venues through the same doors as his, white, as his fellow white entertainers. Uh, he was told he had to distance himself from his white fans. You know, women would want to come and hug him, and it wasn't allowed. Mm. You know, um, mm. and, and my fact is that the racism was so bad that at the height of his fame, Sammy Davis Jr., was kidnapped and threatened by mobsters on the orders of the owner of Columbia Pictures for racist reasons. That's my fact. Yeah, you know, um, I can believe it. Uh, I can believe it. Also, 
the reason I can believe it is because I'm finally watching the Godfather series. Oh, really? Yes. And I think they have the conversation in the first one about starting to get into drugs and Marlon Brando's character doesn't want to get into drugs. Mm. And then the, the one guy says a very bad thing. He says, ah, oh, no, we won't sell to to the Italians. Uh, we'll just sell to the black people, you know. And that's like, it was very derogatory, said mm. in a very derogatory way. No, but this, this specifically, so, so while he was kidnapped, this is what I'm saying. This is my fact is that while he was kidnapped by mobsters, uh, it was on the orders of the owner of Columbia Pictures, the movie theater, the movie company, the movie production house. Okay. Yeah. Kidnapped by mobsters. Yeah, man. Well, you see, the funny... Th I, Jeez, man. It's a, 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 America had a funny relationship with black entertainment because, mm. because there, was this, there was this racism, but they loved black entertainers. Yeah. And so it's all very, very odd. And I mean, one of the, the reasons the mob was in there, I think, yeah. because Frank Sinatra was was part of it. Right. So that's why I think there might be some truth to what you're saying, just because of the convoluted nature. Nothing was simple. Well, um, one of the reasons why they say Elvis became so popular was he basically stole songs from black musicians, <laughs> and then as a white guy was able to go and perform them, you know, for white yeah. crowds, and the the. The powers that be would allow it. I believe over the radio, some people did think he was black. Right. Yeah, because apparently he grew up in, in a poor black neighborhood. But that's, a, that's entirely... Okay. That's entirely but, I, I, you know, I'm going to say this whole story, Colombia being involved in the film industry, mm, I'm going to say it, could, it sounds like it could be true to me. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that it's true. You started it, with it. It is, it is true. It is true. Wow. He was, uh, the reason was he was dating um, an actress by the name of Kim Novak. He'd become quite famous because of Alfred Hitchcock's movie uh, Vertigo. And um, he was thinking about marrying her. Jeez. And uh, according to Vanity Fair, the Hollywood mogul Harry Cohn, who was the owner of Columbia Pictures, didn't like this at all. Uh, he got the wind of the affair and he hired famed mobster Mickey Cohen's goons to go and kidnap uh, Sammy Davis Jr. and to rough him up a little and tell him to break up with, with Kim Novak. And apparently he then he went to the FBI and he tried to report it and stuff, but uh, J. Edgar Hoover mm. swept it under the car under the carpet. Jeez. And he wouldn't he wouldn't prosecute it. Um, so then I mean literally months later uh, Davis married a woman by the name of Lore White, who was a, a, a black dancer. Um, simply so that he, he hoped that like the mobsters would leave him alone um, and he'd get away from you know, the threats, but apparently it was an unhappy marriage. It was his first of three. But oh, yeah, shame. There you are. So that, that was absolutely true. So That's Sammy crazy, Davis Jr. man. Yeah. Look, uh, I think the Godfather series is not a fact story. Yeah. But I wonder how much uh, historical stuff is happening because they, they were very into the casinos big time. Yeah. And so entertainment was, oh, yeah. Uh, I think they were close cousins, you know, the mobsters and, and entertainment in, in, in yeah, listen, America. Listen, and, and let's, let's be honest, the, the movies weren't exactly, like, unracist. You know, you, you look back at the Jungle Book, <laughs> Disney movie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jungle Book. King Louis. They're like, yeah, they're like, <laughs> who, what they're going to do? The King Louis, they cast Louis Armstrong as as the monkey. Oh. You can almost you can almost hear those fucking racist bastards. Oh yeah. Like chuckling about that. Oh, you know no, what the, I mean? Like, you know the original uh, Jungle Book which I love, it, it's got some uh, I I I does the Baloo the bear go why you little cotton picking? I, at some point he says something mm. terrible like that when oh, he's fighting he? with the uh, in the movie. Yes. Oh yeah. The animated movie. Maybe. Why you no good You know cuz there's that uh, that yeah, scene yeah, where yeah. they yeah, and yeah, I'm, yeah. even I'm like well, Back, back as, a, as a young person. When, yeah, and you can almost hear those executives chuckling about it. So the idea that this guy, Harry Cohen, uh, the owner of, uh, of Columbia Pictures, the, the fact that he decided he was going to rough up old Sammy Davis Jr. for daring to date a white actress. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. yeah. Well, my first fact, that was a lovely first fact. My first fact has a link to yours. You'll be happy oh, to nice, know. Nice. I've, nice. I've learned the old uh, linking <laughs> game. Got a lot of segues, eh? Uh, also, uh, musicians that had a riches to rags experience in their life. And um, also uh, black musicians, but not uh, black Jewish musicians. Like apparently Sammy yeah. Davis Jr. Yeah, apparently yeah. He was he was Jewish on one of the sides, or he was. Yeah, he was and I Jewish. think he was like Panamanian. He had he had interesting kind of ancestries. Wow. Yeah. Well, 
I'm bringing it to uh, my childhood as I finished uh, primary school. We had the awesomeness of Millie Vanilli, which oh. uh, I totally fell in love with. And yeah, uh, yeah. I totally bought into the whole thing. Uh, still I mean, when you say fell in love with, I'm imagining you like a teenage girl on your bed, legs kicked up in the air, diary in front of you. You know, phone at your ear, twisting your finger yeah. around the phone cord. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. The pom pom on the back of your pencil. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah. I, I was, I was like, uh, <laughs> more like, I was about 11. But uh, the f I remember watching on the music video show, uh, Girl, You Know It's True. You know, and they had this cool little dance, this like movement with their legs, like okay. pendulum movement. And I was like, I was practicing that all day long, you know. Girl, you know it's true. It was very, very cool. And of course, then the story, and, and that first album won a Grammy. Uh, best debut artist or something like that and uh, yeah. they were managed by the same dude uh, German dude who founded uh, Boney M so I knew what he was doing and oh, what mm -hmm. a story and and then you read the story in hindsight oh it's tragic because they they'd, they'd had the song and they're like oh you guys are great you guys are get great dancers yeah. coming to the studio yes girl you know it's true do you like it do you think you can sing it yeah sure we can let's get in there and then they, they sing it and the producer's like mm -mm. Oh, really? Is but we've got I mean? a show book next week. So do you think you could, just for the time being, lip sync it for us? And oh, then, okay, see. okay. But when, when do we get to sing it? Ah, soon, soon. Oh, shucks, we've released it. It's gone huge. Oh, dear. What do we do? So sad. And so then, it's um, not, I mean, I always figured it was a situation that now is really acceptable. You know, uh, who, what was it? Ashley Simpson got brought low for, for lip syncing on Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah, but yeah. But so, since that... I it's think almost it's a become thing. yeah. It's almost become tolerable because people are saying, "Oh no, you can't, you can't play pop music live and then have somebody sing to it." Yeah. So you have to you have to lip sync it. Yeah. So now you know Miley Cyrus and all these people have have been lip syncing and it hasn't ruined their careers at all. So I always just assumed that this Shame. was a very early example, a sort of an Ashley Simpson version. But you're saying it was bigger than that. You're saying yeah, was, and and plus they they didn't sing the original. That's the problem. Yeah, their voices don't sound like those like those songs, and that's tragic. So eventually, uh, I don't know how it exactly came about, but the producer himself um, released it, and it's got some weird record. You know, it's got firstly, um, it yeah, it it sold majorly, but it's the first sort of uh, big selling album to be totally pulled. From the shelves, and if you bought it, you could get a get your money uh, back. Yeah, you know what my favorite fact it's about all of terrible. this is, though. All of this. I haven't I haven't given my fact fact, but no, no, no. But yeah, my yeah. favorite thing about all of this story so far is you saying that you used to at eleven years old practice Milli Vanilli's dancing. Yeah. Because what that means is essentially that that weird is born. It's not created. You were always that <laughs> that strange boy. It's a great song. You're always man. this. It's always and that it's not song. something that my son will now catch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, nature versus nurture. Who bloody knows, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so my fact is they uh, went through a terrible slump and uh, tried various things to recover um, and try to get back into the game, try to have a, their own actual singing album and went back into modeling, a bit of DJing work. Um, but it turns out they both recovered and are uh, quite successful house music DJs in, in Europe traveling doing house music seems to be like the place to go if you're a failed 1980s <laughs> so, act i mean I or if failed, you made your like own porn shop, video yeah. like paris hilton isn't she a house dj as well oh she probably is yeah, yeah. but as i said pet shop boys are now house DJs. <laughs> really? yeah. but the pet shop boys were they were not failed by any, no, no, any no. stretch of the imagination and and some of the the 80s pop stuff has got it's got a dance vibe man that song hot it's actually on my <laughs> playlist Right. Did, did you know I love All right. So, what is your actual fact about Millie that they that they recovered eventually? Yes, they and hit a low. Now they're house DJs. Yeah, now they're house DJs. So there was riches. There was rags. I've honoured the code. No, you haven't, because it was. Oh well, I suppose in a way you have. I I just took it very strictly to mean that you ended in rags. You perhaps, yeah, maybe have uh, have fudged this a bit, or. You're starting with a lie again, Ryan. <laughs> Are you starting with a lie again? Would you dare? Would you dare? No, I believe they with, can be. With Millie Vanilli, would I start with a lie about I believe. I believe one of them is a house DJ and the other one is a homeless crack addict. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fingers crossed. All right, so your final answer? Is that you're a liar, Ryan. Well... I'm afraid you're right. I lied. I lied because it's sadder than that. Oh, it is sadder. And it does honor the, the, oh, really? the rags thing even more. The one dude, the more buff dude, 
he um, he couldn't handle it, and he uh, they were going to try one more time to get together and release an album, but just before the release, he um, in a German hotel he overdosed on tablets and alcohol. I thought he jumped, but, but you he never didn't. know. You never but know whether he did that on purpose or not. You know, like isn't that what Heath Ledger died of? Was accidental, like yeah, make, the, having a drink while mixing it with a tablet that he shouldn't have. Yeah, they ruled it as as an accident. But there's a this troubling interview on in a VH1 documentary I watched years ago, which was um, he's kind of suggesting in the interview, very morbid. He's very he's clearly depressed, and he's like, man, if this album doesn't work, I don't know what I'm gonna do, man. I think it's over for me. You know, so sure. troubling. Troubling words. Yo, that's, I mean, <clears throat> you know, nice one for the comedy podcast there, Deets. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for making us talk about people's absolute ultimate misery. She's mm. like, hey, listen, Sammy Davis Jr. got his eye stabbed out in a car accident, but lol. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know why he had to blame it on himself. Why couldn't he just blame it on the rain, you know? Yeah, all right. Um, <laughs> 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 all right, you know what? It gets it gets bigger than this, right? Because we're talking about like like black entertainers, black singers. Michael freaking Jackson. This oh, is where this I'm is going. This is sad. This is where I I'm going. I don't believe you. this is doesn't qualify. The king of pop, no, right? This a man paid 175 million dollars for Jeez, Thriller. Man. He could have just sold the roller coaster in his house. He owned the Beatles back catalog, mm. which alone earned him roughly 15 million dollars a year. But when he mm. died, he was he was bankrupt. He well, died, he was bankrupt. That's you know, this is my yeah. fact. This is my no, fact. There's no flipping ways. I, I, I remembered at the time of his death because I'm a massive Michael Jackson fan. And uh, when there was even rumors that he died, I tuned into CNN. The rumors and was it, Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> <laughs> that did not deserve that response, Ryan. Not at all. I'm ashamed for you. I'm ashamed for you. <laughs> anyway. And so I tuned into CNN. Because I didn't want it to be true. I didn't want it to be true. And, it, and 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 some tabloid thing had broken the news that he died, but CNN still hadn't confirmed it. Mm. So I'm like, please be wrong, tabloid thingy. Please be wrong, tabloid thingy. But they weren't. Yeah, I and mean, his died. family, you know, like I'm going to give you a few more facts before you decide, but his family uh, decided that uh, his record company was to, was to blame, and they tried to sue them for $1.5 billion because they appointed the doctor that gave him the wrong... <laughs> medication that ultimately resulted in him dying um as the record company dude yeah well the yeah the promoters good lord yeah yeah so the doctor so they involved tried, yeah, in so business. the family tried to and the reason they tried to sue him was because uh you know they had no money hmm. Michael, well mikey was was bankrupt yeah they, i remember the rumors around that time that oh actually money not so good you know but um i don't i don't him. Stop playing with that thing on the wire. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. Uh, Adit's asked you to please stop pulling the wire. <laughs> <laughs> that's only him that's allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is what he's doing in his little cave there. <laughs> pulling on the wire. Okay. Hey, Deets. Yeah, yeah. We can hear. Just so you know, just like. <laughs> so, I mean. Massive foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> Massive. It's like a. It's like an orange in a in a pick and pay packet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that little segue, folks. And anyway, wait, wait, wait. Oh, uh, Michael, no. I remember the rumors, people suggesting he was bankrupt and never mm -hmm. landed. Mm -hmm. blah, blah. Well, I don't. Yeah, but you know, it's all about net worth and you know the property and the value and and plus. No, I don't. And then it, I think it turned out that he wasn't so badly off. So I'm gonna say no, 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 no. No, he wasn't bankrupt, or he wasn't owing, he wasn't bank, he was in the green, not the red. I mean, essentially, he was bankrupt, right? Um, there they was a, a forensic accountant who went through his stuff, William R. Ackerman, um, who alleged that he had this very early debt of $30 million that he, he'd basically been trying to pay off on for years and years and years. And then he had this extremely extravagant lifestyle. And the yeah. Neverland Ranch is said to have cost him, you know, he had a zoo of exotic animals there and a, and a free funfair thing for the local kids and, you know, a train. And he had all these things that he was maintaining. And then there's a, there's a video online of him kind of walking into an antique store going, I'll take that one. And I'll take that one. And that one. Very good. Very and that good. one. And that one. And that one. <laughs> you just like him. Yeah, if I close even, my eyes, it's like Michael's here. And then he didn't, he didn't <laughs> even get paid for his... his uh, 
his role on The Simpsons. You know, he was uncredited for that. So, so, so apparently, he while he had so much money, he was spending an inordinate amount, and then of course his legal troubles cost him a staggering amount because you know you got like fifty kids, you got to give ten million dollars each to. Oh yeah. You know that that's that's an expensive oh, thing to that. be doing. Oh, you mean that? You're that. You're that. Um, yeah. So, so apparently, he was between four hundred and five hundred million in debt when Ooh. he died, Ooh. and um, but, dollars, U.S. But, dollars. Yeah, yeah. But as you say, you know, he, he had a lot of stuff. So there's apparently a warehouse somewhere that's got most of his stuff and it costs one and a half million dollars just to store that <laughs> stuff in it. So But critically he's also yeah, he's got this big back catalogue of, of a lot of musicians' music. And because he's now not spending that money, he is on the Forbes he's number one on the Forbes's Dead people earnings list. Golly. So he's actually now, again, worth money and he's paid off his debt and everything else. But when he died, he was 400 to $500 million in debt. But he's now apparently... Because subsequently they've released albums for him. They've, they've released sure. tour stuff. You know, yeah. he, had the, he had the mirage of him. What was oh, it? That hologram of him shucks. that went out and uh, oh, yeah. that performed. Yeah. So, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff that people have been milking his image and he's been making a lot of money for them. Uh, subsequently, and uh, yeah, yeah, he's now he's now worth uh, apparently quite a bit. Yeah, this is it. The concert movie release mm-hmm, mm-hmm. was a deal for two hundred million dollars for, um, one hundred fifteen million dollars. Sorry, two hundred million dollars. He's been paid already by Sony for additional albums that are going sure. to be released of like just stuff he had. Um, Jeez. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, so so yeah, he died. He died uh, penniless. Um, this, I've got a, I've got another little fact uh, just about him, just as kind of interest. Uh, Michael Jackson won a Golden Globe. Tell me whether this is true or false. Michael Jackson won a Golden Globe for writing the theme tune to a 1972 horror movie. Good Lord. I, I, I'd have to say no. Uh, 1972. Oh, he was way too young. Um, no, what could it have been? No. No, no, no. You, you're trying to trick us because <laughs> horror, because of Thriller, which was... Uh, ten years later. No, he only won. He only won. And what I'm saying to you is, he only yeah. won one Golden Globe, and it was for a 1972 <laughs> horror movie theme tune. Maybe it was "Blame It on the Boogie." Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't. I mean, the, that doesn't. Don't, don't blame it on the boogeyman. <laughs> <laughs> don't blame it on the good times. Blame it on the boogeyman. Woo! No, but I'm saying it's not true. It is true. It is what? True. Yeah, the movie was and the song the are both called Ben. Yeah. Ben, was it a horror? Yeah. No. Yeah, there you go. The Ben is about a little mouse that's his friend. No, that can't be true. It's true. It's true. Really? Yeah, yeah. Ben. Mucky. Mucky. He also played the scarecrow in The Wiz. Do you yeah, remember The Wiz? That. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't Diana the, uh, wasn't she, um, she was Dorothy. Princess Diana. <laughs> no, no, I don't Dirty do Diana. Dirty Diana. The Diana, Diana Ross. Ross. Yeah, yeah. No, the Dirty Diana. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. That's racism, <laughs> right? No, no, because he had a song called Dirty Diana. <laughs> that is pure and simple racism, No, no, Ryan. no, no, no. All right, all right, I fine. Love Diana. No, let's move on. I love let's her. move on, Ryan, before you dig this even deeper. All right. So, uh, well, we've gone music, 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 music. No, we have. It's time to change. And my link here is... Tell us at best. Is um, Ben was named was written about a mouse, right? Uh-huh. And I'm going to talk about a mouse of a man called Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon Bonaparte was was average height for his era. <laughs> yeah. So that the am I reaching for the ra- the richest to rags? Not really. He was the emperor of the freaking world, you know. And he died on what Saint S- Helena. Saint Helena, yeah. So I was uh, I'd I'd honed in on on Napoleon as as you know. The, captured and, and um you know humiliating in that he's mm, imprisoned mm. in a british uh, penal island and, and i read about his stay at st Helen and sometimes they'd have he called it a court and they'd have people visiting and they could only enter if they dressed nicely and right. but it was all it was a prisoner so it was all a bit silly but um and and the the house he stayed in was terribly dank and um there was uh 
spores and fungal shit. Sounds shits. a little bit Jacob Zuma, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like at some point he was like the Gupta, like the playboy, and now he's got to live in that awful house that he built that's falling up da- down around his ears. You With know, no security. Yeah, you know, while pretending <laughs> that he's some big rock star and the, real, the whole country just like... <laughs> 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 I think even the people of Nkandla are now like... Ah, 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 ah. Even the people who who work for him, you know? <laughs> just a shame. And so, so yeah, I actually might have even got some infection from the fungal spores and terrible. Um, but my fact is at the autopsy, the doctor... Cut off his penis. And found out what? I don't know. Why? Why did he cut off his penis, right? I, I'm not going oh, to illuminate that. Yeah, yeah, of that. course he did it. Of course he cut off his penis. Of course he did. That's absolutely 100% true. Why would I? Listen, if you were the doctor doing the autopsy on Napoleon, you'd be like, I could sell this on the internet. <laughs> like, this was years before the internet, but I'm pretty sure there were places where you could go to sell Napoleon's penis. For quite a lot of money, I'd imagine. You seem very confident. That I'm very that's confident. The truth. I'm very confident because it's I'm pretty gross. sure. No, the French. Yeah, the French. They, they, they. I have my gross moments. I could have made that up. <laughs> no, the French. The French would definitely cut off his cock. It's probably. It's probably like cock olivan is where that comes from. <laughs> Napoleon cock olivan. It's actually he. He liked. He played a lot of sports, Napoleon, and that's where the cock sports he. <laughs> So you, your final answer is... Is they definitely cut off his cock, probably made it into a nice little hors d'oeuvre. They cut his cock off, they did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> and it appeared in a museum in 1927 for the first time. I don't know where his cock is today. I think it's still about. I think it's still it in must some... Be. It's a, there's museum. some old woman who's got it in a like a pickle jar in her, <laughs> in her, in her not, attic. Like, you know, it's it's in probably, Paris. People probably go on some weird pilgrimage to I want to see this thing and then they see it I was like Ooh. you know there's that there's that penis museum in Reykjavik in Iceland oh yeah, yeah they so got like there. a whale penis and I've stuff I've been there I tell you something Blue don't, whale. don't go there if you're a man who is averagely endowed <laughs> because the human penis they've got in there I can see why that dude left it to a museum <laughs> it's a fucking monster and it made me regret everything in my life Ryan <laughs> everything was he, was he Icelandic no, no, no. <laughs> he wrote to them from like America or something. It's like, listen, fella, listen, fellas. <laughs> I got something you guys are going to definitely want to see. And then he, he bequeathed it to them in his will. So, so somebody went and chopped it off and took it to the... And, and it's there purely to shame every other man on the planet. Like every other man. Because this thing is... Ryan, I swear to you, it's Was like, it in a, t- a softer state? Or did they pump it with a... I don't know, but it's, it's, it's in a jar. Like, it's in a jar of formaldehyde. But, but Ryan, it's the size of my forearm. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is a monster. Like, it like is, you, is it porn appropriate? stars, porn stars go there. You know, Rocco Sifredi <laughs> goes there and he watches this. And, oh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> is it appropriate to ask what color it is? That's probably a strange kind of... No, weird. well, I mean, now it's like formaldehyde gray. color. But he's a, he's a white guy. <laughs> doubters, <laughs> doubters. <laughs> but but yeah, like apparently they want to collect like seven or eight. They they kind of want the collection of of human penises to grow bigger. They've got whale penises there that are like the size of like a human being. That's yeah, man, it's, interesting. it's a weird museum. It's very small. It's a very small museum. <laughs> you know, you hear about a museum, you think you think the British the British Museum of cocks, you know, but it's not. It's not. It's like two little rooms. <laughs> Um, and quite expensive to get into. I don't know why I paid to go into <laughs> now that I think about it, to be honest. You traveled to Iceland just to go to that <laughs> yeah, museum. Yeah. It's, it's, it's probably the second most disappointing tourist attraction I've ever been to after Madame Tussauds in Was London. that? Was it disappointing? Mar- Isn't it large? No, listen, I'm going to tell, you, I'm gonna tell to you what see? Madame Tussauds is, and I'm going to tell it to you now coldly without any of the da-da-da-da pizzazz that they put on the sales, some of on our the sales thing. Okay. It is statues of famous people made out of wax, Ryan. That's what it is. I know. That's great, man. It's a piece of shit, Ryan. It's a piece of shit. You can't touch any of the people. So you can't, like, stand next to them and have your Slap photo. Donald Trump. Yeah, man. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, Is man. there the early Donald or the later Donald? It's like 40 pounds to get into Madame Tussauds. And then it's just, it's just wax figures you can't fuck. <laughs> I don't know why. Honestly, I don't know why they put the effort in. I don't. I don't fully understand it. 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 
like queues of people to get in there. Queues and queues and queues. Piece of shit. Most disappointing tourist attraction I've ever been to. Second one, Reykjavik Penis Museum. But at least, you know, the Reykjavik Penis Museum, all I did was I paid money. I paid seven euros or whatever it was. It was quite cheap. Seven euros to get in there and then be shamed for the size of my <laughs> genitalia, Ryan. I can shame myself for the size of my genitalia with the internet connection I have at home. I do not need to, to go travel, to a museum, to, yeah, to travel around the world, go to a museum to shame myself for that. I don't. I don't need that. Nobody needs that. Are they obsessed with it, the Icelandic men, because with their freezing temperatures, they <laughs> retract and are fantastically small I don't think Iceland. so. I don't think then so. Oh, I read what once. is that? That's amazing. I read once that Swedish men are supposed to have the largest average uh, penis size in the world of any country. But then oh, wow. the Jurek survey is self-reported. So Swedish men may have that or they may be the world's biggest liars. <laughs> we just have Jurek's a, a Swedish c yeah. company. Uh, is it? No. I'm asking. Know. No, I, I, I don't no. think so. I don't think so. No. I mean, the chances are 205 to 1 that it's not, you know? <laughs> like, it could be any other country in the world. Um... There was, a, there was the joke, that old joke about the two dogs uh, about to have sex. And then the one says, do you have a condom? And then the other one says, G-Rex. And the niece says, I asked you first. <laughs> Sorry. You know, Ryan, we were having a good time. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong it, with you. It is over to you, but um, it was Napoleon's penis. It's yeah, so it was it was in fact removed. Anyway, I think that's probably gonna like if if that really museum was. in Reykjavik could get hold of that penis, I reckon that would be their star attraction. Oh, I would wow. pay. Then it would no longer be the second most disappointing tourist attraction I've Let's ever seen. Find been out to. where it is. It was yeah. nineteen twenty seven in a listen museum. Listen to me. If you're the, if you're from the Reykjavik Penis Museum, um, let us know because Napoleon's uh, cocks out yeah, there. Yeah, Napoleon's cocks out there. Let's see if we can put these two <laughs> things together at last. Yeah. Let's see if we it's can destiny, get. Eh? Let's see if we can get Napoleon's penis into the right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it happen. Uh, speaking of world leaders, I'm going to talk about a, a famous one. Um, yeah, uh, one of uh, America's most famous founding fathers. Oh, yeah. You you may you may have heard of him, Thomas Jefferson. He uh, he yes. died. He did die. Uh, he died $107,000 in debt, which in today's money is $2 million in debt. Jeez. Uh, and the reason for this was because he loved food and drink and fine wine particularly. And he spent a lot of money on big, lavish kind of banquet parties for his friends. And and because of that, so, so you know, he, he, he spent so much money. He, he owned vineyards and crops and plantations and stuff to try and feed his, you know, make his own wines and feed his own kind of food addictions and stuff. I'm not saying it. Really? But he wasn't really addicted <clears throat> to it. But but yeah, so he had a lot of money invested in agriculture <laughs> that, that ultimately lost him money and he, he landed up going bankrupt. But a lot of the reason why he was invested in agriculture in the first place was because he loved food so much. So he had he had vineyards in Italy, for example. And, and really? Um yeah. But but my fact is this is my fact. Um because of him throwing these big banquets <clears throat> and his love of food, he was often like at the forefront of people discovering kind of new foods. And, and then popularizing them through his banquets. And because of this, uh, to this day, ice cream, mac and cheese, and French fries are all popular American staples. And that's because they first appeared and were popularized by <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. What is it about which people and weird food? I mean, ice the, cream, French fries, and mac and cheese is not weird food. It's not like he was eating food. Napoleon's cock, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is normal, oh. normal food. This is good food. I'm just saying that nobody knew about them before Thomas Jefferson. Nobody in America knew about them before Thomas Jefferson. Well, well, well. Yeah, I thought I knew it. When I was little, I read a book, a little. Kitty's book on Thomas Jefferson, but I forgot what was in there. But he seemed like a good person. <laughs> I mean, that was so important. What a great addition to this podcast. <laughs> I read a book <laughs> once about this <laughs> guy, but I've forgotten it entirely. Good did fact. He, did he not once have a? Uh, did he not once have a relationship with a, with a one of his slaves? Yeah, he did. Did he love her? Didn't he love her? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. There's that. Um, yeah, yeah, again, also <laughs> valuable. But this did he spend all his money thing. on food? Yeah, did he? Did he go bankrupt because of his love of food? Imagine the fact is he went bankrupt because of his love of 
Napoleon's Ladies. cock. <laughs> he spent eight and a half million dollars <laughs> on Napoleon. Trying to get Johnson. his hands on Napoleon. <laughs> trying to get his hands on Napoleon. John. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. It just sounds. It. I. I. I'm sure the book I read try, painted him as a um, very noble, upstanding, almost religious chap, mm. and that uh, no, that gluttony. No, certainly not. Certainly not. He did not go bankrupt because of food. And I'd be keen to know if the fact about ice cream, mac and cheese, and French fries is true. Because those, those are almost well, that's certainly... The, that's, the, that's the fact. Almost that's certainly the, yeah. um, uh, European things that were brought to America. I don't think they were made famous in America. Maybe they were. So, but I'm going to say, no, no, he didn't go bankrupt because of his love of food. No. False lies. I mean, Boom. yeah, he largely did because he was invested what? in agriculture. His vineyards all... Kind of went pear shaped. Ah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and in fact, yes, he popularized ice cream, mac and cheese, and French fries uh, into the American like lexicon, and they've now become American staples as a result. But he died in. A but deep he died financial. in one hundred and seven thousand dollars in debt. Uh, incidentally, his other fellow founding father, James Madison, also died penniless. So, you know, being a founding father, being on the money, doesn't mean you have any. <laughs> Poor buggers, man. Yeah, Poor yeah. buggers. Probably the British trying to squeeze them, <laughs> squeeze the economy. Well, uh, we, you know, he was he wasn't even a, a king. He was a president, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'd like to cross over the pond, Good. row over the pond, right. like they rowed over the Delaware, yeah. but row back over the pond. <laughs> and Good, great segue, Ryan. To a to a country. Now I believe. I believe there's a connection yet to even you, to a country called Albania. Mm. Because they were once pre-Soviet Russia pulling in there, yeah. a monarchy. And uh, I think their, their, their king's name was Zog or something. <laughs> and he uh, bolted. And he, hey, Deets, rock Lovely and roll. Deets, thank you very much. Striped horses. Stri and uh, so Zog. In a can, like, like he, they're supposed to be drunk. He, uh, Zog, fled to the UK and spent time because the Soviet Union pulled in and over, mm. over the communist revolution of Albania. And uh, he had a kid who also mostly UK, married a, an actress in Madrid and, and very strange royal family, Albania, because it's a bit of uh, Islam, a bit of Catholic, a bit of Protestantism as well. So, the you know, the prince... Um, the prince in waiting, or the print, the pretender prince, whatever mm. you want to call it, his uh, was a cross religious thing in in Spain, and uh, so that prince in the seventies, uh, as you might know, eventually made his way to sunny South Africa. Mm. Uh, his his kid, which is the, and then Zog died. So the kid, born in South Africa in Joburg, Bryanston. Is uh, if there is ever to be a the monarchy to be restored in Albania is the prince next the heir in the heir apparent you know but the dad so Zog's son the dad my fact is this he he actually fled um, Madrid uh, because they had a lot of uh, <coughs> weapons Spanish and stuff oh, not <coughs> Spanish people okay. <laughs> <laughs> weapons the Albanians a lot of weapons and they were headed for Gabon. And a, a Gabon uh, security guard group uh, surrounded the airplane. They, apparently, they were being tasked by the Albanian government to arrest the prince. Uh, and they not opened the plane and they got shooed away by the prince who was holding a bazooka. <laughs> So, so, what you're saying so, is, so what you're saying is so they were, they, they were fleeing Madrid, right? Because <clears throat> they'd heard that something was going to happen. Yeah, so so they they actually had a, a big arms cache with them in Madrid. So the Spanish asked them to leave. This whole thing seemed dangerous. So they were headed for Gabon. They get there. Hang on, land hang on. You mean by big arms cache? You mean guns rather than than guns? Yeah, they had machine guns the, rather yeah. than big arms. Yeah, they yeah. the family liked to travel. <laughs> they they with had money for protein shakes. That's what that's what I mean. Big arms cache. Big arms cash. 
By the time, deeply. Look, by the time they got to Joburg, the, the son that was born was like, hey, but yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've got a chicken. These guns, there was different guns. Yeah, uh, yeah. The Virgin Active. Big but, arms cash. Yeah. They had cash for, for, for their big arms. <laughs> C-A-C-H-E, I think. For our as, as opposed to C-A-S-H for my <laughs> protein shakes. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah, they get to Gabon. They're about to be arrested by the guards who surround the plane. Knock, 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 open up. There's... The prince of Albania with a bazooka and they back off and then the, and they get to the, take off. The, yeah, the, the, the plane takes off and they, they were headed for um, some sort of uh, asylum in uh, Rhodesia and then Mugabe took over. Oops, uh, maybe we're not so welcome here. Joburg. Huh. Why? I have no idea. Did the apartheid government see that as a, uh, um, you know, a diplomatic blah, blah? But they did and they... Because they, they hated, the, of course, they hated the Russians. The, the apartheid oh, government ah, hated communism. Ah, so very anybody good, good who was connection. Yeah, you know, anybody who was Enemy fighting of communism. communism. Yeah. But uh, you, you're right. I did know that because um, the grandson used to go to my school. As in, uh, as in the, the prince's son, the guy, yeah, the, the one who was son. Yeah, he used to go. He was a couple of years behind me at school. Really? But, but yeah, he was. Uh, he was in my school. Yeah, because you, you're a saints boy. Warren's a saints boy, and it also says uh, spend some time at St. Peter's. You know St. Peter's College? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, maybe a bit of, yeah, at bit the of time, it was a vastly inferior school. I believe it's it's, it's much nicer now. Um, but, yeah. What, Saints or St. Peter's? I mean, both of them. Both of them are now Saints far bigger always, than they used yeah, to be. Saints yeah. was always a great school. Yeah, man. but now they're, they're both far bigger than they used to be. So, um, um, yeah, that's my fact, you know, this, uh, especially around the what happened. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why not? <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. If I had a bazooka. Listen, they were being kicked out for their arms cash. Fuck a butt, eh? Uh, <laughs> they were kicked out for their arms cash. Why not? Why Why wouldn't some of those arms be bazookas? Sure, I believe it. Shit. Well, again, I'm telling the truth. Would you bloody believe it? I yes. Yeah. But I mean, what a fact. What a fact. So the, the, the pretender, I love that word. Mm. Uh, once I heard it in British history uh, when there was a pretender who fled to... Now there's a pretender in Australia or something. It means you're going to be the king next, but you can't yet because they don't want you to be. Right. I, I heard so, there was a story that they were talking about reinstating them at some point. The of Mon, uh, of Albania, yes. So so that dude that went to school with you, he's mm. gone back to Albania and he's uh, he's a diplomat now, and uh, he might even run for president. Uh, and he he does very uh, noble things to restore uh, good economy and and good commerce and good. Uh, democracy yeah. things in albania maybe it's a country that's on the up so so he was a few years behind me at school he's going to be president of albania and i've got this podcast <laughs> you, right? yes if the fucking Reykjavik penis museum didn't smash my ego enough that'll do it that'll finish me off ha like the so, penis museum eh another like like deets in his cave finish me off no but i uh Look, I, I can feel bad about myself, but I'm no Oscar Wilde, eh? <laughs> Look at that! Is it your that's little? The oh, that's the segue. Yeah, that's the segue you're looking for. No, because we talked about Oscar Wilde we did, like yeah. a couple episodes ago. Picture and I, of Dorian I, Gray. Yes, and I got to thinking about it, and um, he's a guy who who you know definitely riches to rags. Yeah. Um, and the story is so so sad. It is sad. What happened is um. In 1891, he met a, a man. He was married with two kids. But he met a man who was 16 years his junior by, by the name of Lord Alfred Douglas, who he fell, like, madly in love with. And they went about town together. And this this enraged Lord Alfred Douglas's father, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, who was a marquis. Mm -hmm. And um, this, I mean, but it enraged him, you know. Like, it didn't... It didn't make him a casual, you know, kind of <laughs> slightly miffed, you know. Oh, he did no stiff upper lip kind of behavior. No. He um he told Wilde to stop corrupting his child, you know, who was twenty four at the time. To be fair, mm. you know, I mean, mm. he was an adult. And then Oscar Wilde was like, "No, I, you know, uh, why should <clears> I?" <throat> and then uh, Lord Alfred Douglas's father started following uh, the pair across London and threatening violence whenever he saw them together and. You know, uh, he used to go to restaurants and hotels that he knew they were staying at and, and shout at the managers and try and get them to, to kick them out and these sorts of things. Uh, I mean, he even booked uh, a seat for the opening night of The Importance of Being Earnest, oh. which, was, which, was, which opened on Valentine's Day in 1895. And, 
and his plan was to throw rotten vegetables at Wilde when he came on stage at the end of the show. But uh, Oscar Wilde heard about this and had him barred at the door and had him kicked out. So then he went, um, he went to the Abba Merle Club in Mayfair where he knew the two of them would be and uh, and he wasn't allowed entrance there either. So he left a card that basically said, called Wild a sodomite. And by now, like his actions had kind of started spreading around and the mm-hmm. media had started hearing about it and things. So so Wild, you know, he had a couple of options and his his friends said to him, Listen, Wild, this is dangerous for you. You know, go to go to France because because being homosexual was legal in France since the revolution. And uh, his friends said, you know, go go there because this guy's like he's a nut. You know, he's going to ruin you. The media now care about this. You know, go lie low. And this dude was just following him and shouting at him and, you know, like attacking, trying to attack him in the streets and these sorts of stuff. Um, and my fact is that that guy, that that marquee, mm-hmm. is in fact the marquee of Queensbury who invented the gentlemanly conduct rules for boxing. It's the same man. That's my fact. Oh, wow. That's... That's a great fact. Uh, it's a great fact. Because they call it Queensbury Rules, right. remember? Yeah. Queensbury Rules. Honourable behaviour. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. That's the Queensbury good. Rules is honourable behaviour. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, you know, last time we spoke, I, I always said I wanted to watch the movie Wild, and, and you were like, Stephen Fry, love the guy. Yes. Not convinced yes, that right. uh, he'd be a particularly good actor. So I remember those words. Did you, you didn't ever see the movie Wild, hey? I haven't seen it, no. And I, I think you're right. Uh... Uh, I like Stephen Fry, but I'm not sure that he invested nicely emotionally. Although he might have been well cast because he's witty and he's kind and he, and he played a naive kind of role. And I think that mm. was Oscar Wilde. Very witty, but definitely naive. You know, and in fact, the, the movie portrays that Douglas dude, Jude Law, as a bit of a um, seducer, you know, kind of took him down yeah, a mean, dark I mean, path that he might not necessarily have gone down. By, by all, no, I, I think by all accounts, that guy was what Oscar Wilde was drawn to, was that mm. he was a wit and a, a very fiercely intellectual guy. And, mm. a, you know, he wasn't he wasn't some child like his father no, was trying no, to portray no. him to be. No. You know, his father was trying to, oh, he's a naive, like, but no, he was, he was I think what, what Oscar Wilde was drawn to was that he was an intellect. He sure. Was a very clever man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's some... I mean, there's, he has three male lovers throughout the movie, and they're played by Jude Law, and then uh, another great British actor who, who stars in Masters of Sex. I forget that guy's name, but he's a hell of an actor. Uh, and then the other one is the dude who plays William Wilberforce in Amazing Grace, but he also was Mr. Fantastic Four, Mr. Stretchy why, Man. Why the whole time you were saying that was I hoping one of them would be Robbie Carlyle. You know, Robbie Carlyle who played Hagrid in the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> And I'm just like these these three young actors. It's like, and they were all brilliant in their roles. They were maybe much better than than, than Stephen Fry. But I wonder if it's like oh, we got a role for you, and it's gonna really make you. Yeah, you just you just have to make sweet love to Stephen Fry. It's like, hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't, right? Like, who, who wouldn't make love? To He's Stephen lovable, Fry? yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just lie there. Like yeah, but, but, but was 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 Lord Douglas's father the Marquis of Queensbury, the inventor of the fair play rules? I'm going to say yes, because I think I've read that on Wikipedia sometime when I was reading about Oscar Wilde. I think that r- rings a bell, jogs a memory. I'm doing a bit of warren robertson memory filing right now <laughs> <laughs> Found but that's it. the point right like, that's, that's the thing yes i'm gonna say yes it's true it is true ah. it is true yeah the man who invented the fair play rules when he had to actually finally fucking use the fair play rules went out of his mind yeah. and basically like assaulted this dude as often as he could so so what happened is and you like you're right about oscar wilde being naive because he tells his friends no he's not going to france He's instead going to defend himself from these libelous, slanderous things from the Marquis of Queensbury. And he files a libel charge against the Marquis of, Qu- yeah. of Queensbury in court. Yeah. Which, of course, becomes a media frenzy. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, and, uh, Talk about Johnny versus Amber. I mean, it must have been... <laughs> I mean, yeah. It was, it was that of the day, right? Yeah. It, was, it was that of the day. And the Marquis of Queensbury did not back down. He, I mean, by all accounts, he managed to conclusively within three days prove that in fact Oscar Wilde was homosexual by bringing in former partners and rant boys and all sorts of things. I'm going to put things like that in the show. Dude. Oh, 
Oh, okay. In action. Oh, there go the lights. <laughs> this is a true South African podcast. Wow. Yeah, You've experienced uh, the South Africanness of it. Please donate to our Patreon. We're collecting a trillion dollars for ESCOM to keep <laughs> the lights on. Yes. Uh, if you, if you love this podcast and want us to not die alone and electricityless under a bridge, I don't. We don't even have a freaking Patreon. But no. Do subscribe. Do tell your friends to subscribe. Yes. It won't. It won't save ESCOM, but it may save. It won't even save, save us. us. Save us. You, well, we we got to get a you got to get a get a place close to the Rondebosch Hospital. I heard those people don't get load shedded. Yeah, help us get a place next to the Rondebosch <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> yeah, donate ten million rand so we can buy a house. One of our listeners, I'm gonna say her name. I'm gonna shame her. Okay. Michelle lives close to the Rondebosch Hospital. You just want to bring up Michelle in every episode. It's it's and a she bit creepy. It's never bit... gets load. Listen, shed. I was talking about Oscar Wilde. Oh, shit, I was talking yeah. about Oscar Wilde. So, so his lawyers dropped the, the case after three days because it became quite quickly evident that the Marquis of, of Queensbury had proven that he was indeed a sodomite Ooh. by bringing in enough, you know, mm. uh, uh, witnesses. witnesses. Yeah, witnesses. And um, so his lawyers withdrew the charges. But unfortunately, what, it, what this whole case had done was alerted the criminal prosecutors that, in fact, he'd been breaking the law because... Homosexuality was was illegal in England at the time, so so they then filed charges, and then uh, he was brought to criminal trial on April twenty sixth, eighteen ninety five, which is just just over two months later than his debut performance of the importance of being earnest, which had earned him standing ovations, yeah. and he'd become the toast of London, and he'd been earning more money than he'd ever earned before, and now just two months later, he's up on charges of criminality and is by all accounts proven again to be to be guilty of all of the sins but he gets away because one lone juror one lone standout um refuses to to call him guilty so it becomes a mistrial and he has to go to trial again which he does in may on may 21st 1895 mm -hmm. so they bring him to trial again and this time um Many of the witnesses refuse to portray him, right? So oh, wow. he, they, they get brought up on on the stage and they refuse to actually specifically say that he did anything. But you know they don't want to lie, so they kind of um and ah, and they 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 speak around the facts and whatever. But they don't specifically uh, betray him. But he is nonetheless uh, convicted. And the judge says at the time, "It's the worst case I have ever uh, tried." I've got that in the movie. Yeah, I shall yeah. pass the severest sentence the law allows. He says, "In my judgment, it is totally inadequate for such a case as this. The sentence mm -hmm. of the court is that you be imprisoned and kept to hard labor for two years, because yeah. that's the most severe case that they, you know, punishment he can hand out. He gets taken to Pentonville Prison, where he spends his days." Uh, you know, like one of the foremost brains of the era, one of the most popular comedians of the time. He he, he spends his days picking apart old rope to get oakum out of the rope because the rope is used to seal the the gaps in ships in Jeez. between the wooden ships. So he spends like ah uh, yeah, and then he's eventually he's he's transferred to London's Reading Jail. Where there's, there's a couple of quotes about how, you know, he, he blames himself. You can see he's in very depressed state as he sort of says, oh, I lived this high life and it's brought me low and this is this kind of thing. And uh, and he spends the time in Reading Jail and then when he's, uh, you know, and his health continues to suffer while he's there and he's depressed and everything. And then as soon as he's released in May of 1897, he sets sail for Dieppe in France uh, on the very same day. And then um, in the interim two years, his wife, because remember he had a wife. Mm. Uh, her name was Constance. Constance. That's mm. right. Yeah. Mm. Oh, very good. Uh, mm. Yeah, she'd moved abroad with his two sons, uh, Vivian and Cyril, which if that did, alone didn't give away the fact that he was homosexual. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> but shame, man. He never saw his kids again. Yes. Yeah, uh, like he, he missed them every single day and he never saw them again. And I think if anybody who's a parent like imagines that yeah. situation... What it's, was the reason for that? Did she not allow So it she all? said to him she would carry on sending him money. No, she didn't want him corrupting the kids. Oh. She said she said she'd carry on sending him money uh, as long as he didn't engage in homosexuality. But then, you know, <clears throat> he had nobody else in his life. Yeah. And and uh, I believe yeah, he carried on his relationship with Douglas and 
for a little bit, but he was in exile in France, essentially. And uh, he wrote a book called The Ballad of Reading Jail at the time. All right. Um, yeah, it was about an execution that, that took place while he was while he was in Reading Jail. Sure. Um, and then he, towards the end of 1900, he developed meningitis and, uh, and a Catholic priest visited, visited his hotel because he was staying in this, like, seedy run down kind of hotel he had no money you know, in uh, in was, paris so yeah in paris, paris yeah and then a catholic <clears throat> priest visited him and baptized him and he died the following day on november 30th at just 46 years old so he he died in proper oh. proper and this is this is just five and a half years after the importance of being earnest you know this massive gala event um you know i mean i think it was about 2017 he was finally you know the, the British government went, whoopsie. <laughs> Sorry, uh, all Oscar. I think they did it to Nikola Tesla as well, who also oh. ended his days in in absolute poverty. Oh, um, my. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, really, the, the, the British government and uh, their treatment of homosexuality was uh, was not great. Um, but, yeah, there you are. That's that's the story of Oscar Wilde. Uh, yeah. That, that's, that's a nice, cheery, cheery it, note. It is, yeah. And, and the, the movie is quite... Um, it's quite clever in how he they, they, he tells bits of he tells bits of the selfish giant to his children, you know. And then uh, I think at some point the the story wraps up as well, and it's quite quite a beautiful, strange story. It's still a if you if, even if you read it today, it's beautiful and odd. And then like any good short story, thunders you at the end with something really strange. Even semi-religious and beautiful, and strange, but yeah, that's that's used in the movie as well. It's yeah, what a what a what a beautiful, complicated character. I I'd, I'd say that this story that you've told now of Oscar Wilde is is so beautiful that it's almost like you can't touch this. <laughs> no, 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 Ryan. Before we. <laughs> yes, I can see where you're going with this. And I hate it, right? I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, ladies. I'm just making myself laugh very hard. No, it's mostly Warren's uh, uh, No, anger, please tell us the, about MC Hammer, Ryan. Right? <laughs> Warren's anger makes me laugh. Well. Yeah, tell it's us fun. about MC, MC more Hammer, nervous, Ryan. More Make nervous me laughter. fucking die inside more than the Reykjavik Museum. Well, all I want to say about yeah. that is... Um, uh, you can touch this, which I loved. At around about the same oh, time look, that Molly Van Molly Vanilli came out, yeah. He, he oh, we're back. The, we're back to the to, late eighties, early nineties. Musicians, black again. music. Yeah, you see, I, 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 I love black people. I, I'm, on this podcast, <laughs> this episode, I've said how much I loved Molly Vanilli and Michael Jackson and MC Hammer. Me, I'm just loving. No, the o- the only, love black only, people. only black person you hated was Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, you, oh, you, you didn't, didn't love him. I didn't know didn't any of his numbers. <laughs> Dean, like Dean Martin saying, uh, it's isn't amore. It, it's, it's isn't amore. it interesting that, that this is a, a thread through this podcast? I didn't yeah. notice it until until you'd also done facts on the on on you know black musicians. I think that's unfortunate. Yeah, that is very there's a lot sad. of like there's a lot of uncredited talent that. Uh, yeah, and although I to be think fair, I think uh, MC Hammer, but by everything I've read of him. Sort of deserves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's what, be honest. He's no Michael Jackson. Uh, no, no. Um, well, he's got some skills. Uh, is in 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 his in in recent years. He wore years. big pants. Yeah, good skill. Yeah, but also in recent, he was a he was a judge on a on a reality dancing show, and uh-huh. then some uh, some weird dancing um, awards thing decided that he was uh, one of like the tenth best pop dancers of all time. Uh, which is what was the, this awards thing? The MC Hammer Awards, <laughs> <laughs> like uh, the ten best dancers of all time. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure like Mikhail Baryshnikov was not in in this list. Right? Why have you watched? You can't touch us. Those movement. You can like the way he uh-huh. jumps his legs around. It's extraordinary in those pajama pants. He's a, he's, he's the Scatman John of legs. Yeah, that's what he is. <laughs> that's what he is. That's what he yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so what, what's interesting about his meteoric rise with that album that had you can't touch us and we've got to pray just to make it today i say we pray but you can't touch us sampled um a very famous song oh damn it's 
it skipped my mind now. <laughs> it's well because that's what they did. You know, ice ice vanilla, yeah, yeah, vanilla yeah. ice. Yeah, he sampled Queen's yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. and you can't touch the sampled. Ah, very famous sort of seventy. I mean, to be sample. fair, Vanilla Ice didn't sample. <laughs> No, he stole yeah. Queen and then <laughs> and he literally, did the, he literally had an interview. There was an interview with him where they went, they went, uh, no, but they're saying that you stole the song. And he went, no, 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 no. Queen's song went like this. Dun, 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 dun. And my song went like this. Dun, 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 dun. And they were like, sorry, what's the, what's the thing there? What's the difference? And he went, no, no, listen, listen carefully. Queen's song went like this. Dun, 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 dun. And then my song went, dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> Fuck. Fucking vanilla ice. You know he he became like a he became like a motorbike racer and then started flipping houses in a reality TV show. He's lived a life all vanilla ice. Yeah, I see, man. And and one of our friends actually actually sang, um, "Ice Ice Baby" to Vanilla Ice. When he was out here for like a 90s tour, Daniel Friedman, uh, Deep Fried Man. Did he? Uh, the comedian, yeah. He, he sang it to him. He sang it to him. There's a video on the internet. Do not stop this. Dear God, please do not stop this. We need you to watch the whole thing. But <laughs> afterwards, make yes. a little note. Make a little note. Go and watch Deep Fried Man, Daniel Friedman singing uh, Ice Ice Baby to Vanilla Ice. It should yeah. be on the internet. Because he came out here for the Castle Light that's advert. Right, because that's they, right, they were yeah. like, our beer's ice cold and... All right, stop, collaborate, and listen. That's right. All right, so but we were talking okay, about so, so other sample, sample, failed nineties. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, what, what's amazing is uh, he, he re released "You Can't Touch Us" as a single, or the the producers did, and it didn't really um, go very high because it was on a, it was as a single, and it peaked at number eight. But the album that that it was on. Stayed number one for 21 weeks because wait. of You Can't Touch This. Wait, wait, wait. You know who else peaked at eight? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Never mind, sorry. Uh, all right, so you're saying the album. So, yeah, the album. So, but th that basically, he did have a meteoric rise from that album. Um, he did, he did. And it was because of You Can't Touch This. And uh, he toured and he had another record deal. And my fact is that... Uh, um, six years later, oh, he filed for bankruptcy. Six years later, that's my fact. Hmm. Uh, yeah, Great. fact. I reckon that's uh, fair enough. Yeah, because because how much money can can one single make you? You know, I think the the reason that many musicians like the Rolling Stones <laughs> keep on going is because you have to kind of be consistently. Yes, making the hits mm. so that people will buy tickets to your shows. You know, you 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 see quite often in America, these bands that were huge in the early two thousands or the nineties. You know, Good Charlotte, mm -hmm. Bowling for Soup, whatever they they're eking by on little gigs in clubs now. You know, to two hundred and three hundred people. That's how they how they're making their living now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So so I can believe that MC Hammer blew all his cash in yeah. six short years because you know what. Jesus may take care of every hair on the head of his because sure it's all numbered quite, it's, it's all it's all numbered right yeah, yeah he's an accountant of hair <laughs> <laughs> Jesus not MC Hammer <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but he but you know like MC Hammer was quite religious so maybe he believed yes. that God was taking care of him or you know we got to pray just to make it today yeah. we go a lot bigger than than can't touch this <laughs> um. Oh, so yeah. So you're saying ultimately six years later? Yeah, you did yeah. I would say six years is about the amount of money you deserve to live the high life off of a song like "Can't Touch This." You don't need more. You don't get more money than that for "Can't Touch This." Yes, you're right. He, he <laughs> right. did it was, and uh, he's st then he claimed on talk shows later that oh no, he wasn't really that bankrupt, but he actually filed for bankruptcy, and um, he was in debt, and it was he'd made. Buckets of money from touring and, and album sales. And uh, he, he was super huge. And the, the playing of that music video over and over. He, he really did make a lot. But the, the kind of uh, posse, you know, the po you know the, what that is? The posse, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's the, boys, he's, he's Yeah, crude. the O's that you take with the ho to the hotel with yeah, you. Yeah, like, the, you know, the guys who ride with me to my comedy gigs. Yeah, you have a posse also. Yeah. Uh, you know, all of that got really expensive and extravagant. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
it got a bit over his yeah, head. Because the thing is, there's a lot of people you need in a posse, right? Right, like you need like you need like four four bodyguards in a posse, you know, four big guys, four bodyguards. <laughs> you need the coke guy. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's a drug guy, maybe he's like Snoop Dogg's marijuana guy. Like he's a he's a guy that sorts out your drugs. Yeah. You need the sex guy. Ooh. Uh, and then you know the guy who sorts out sex, mm. and then you need the sex guy, who's the guy you have sex with when the sex guy <laughs> <laughs> fails to, to get you chicks. And you probably and need then, a bank, a bank dude as well. The money. Yeah, yeah. And the then treasurer. You need, you, need, you need two midgets, you know, yeah. to hold up your cape when you walk. <laughs> <laughs> you need the four guys who carry your sedan chair. <laughs> You know, like a posse, a posse's a thing. A posse's need, a thing. Yeah, like hammer you have to time. Get... Yeah, shuck. So, I mean, but even before he went bankrupt, he had the cartoon animation show Hammer Time. Or something. Yes, he did. He, he was did. he was milking it, man. How did he blow all that money? Posse, no, that's how. I'd totally forgotten about the cartoon. I mean, yeah, adjusted my estimates. If I'd, yeah. if I'd had to factor in the cartoon, I'll be honest. So he has recovered quite nicely doing being a judge on reality shows. Mm. And um, and he, <laughs> yeah, he did become a pastor. Amen, brother. And uh, yeah. I think uh, he did some religious things there, which gained him some following and some money. Right. Hey. Yeah. yeah I mean, if Amen, there's one brother. lucrative pastime, being a pastor in America is it. <laughs> so, but yeah, we're talking time about time. musicians now, right? Like, again, what is with you musicians? Manage your freaking money. Manage your Goodness finances, me. guys. Come on. Um, but I'm going to I'm gonna leap into a musician now, like a, like probably the biggest pop star of, of, uh, of his era. Michael Jackson again. No, his name was Wolfgang Amadeus oh. Mozart. Yeah, oh. he used to earn, uh, according to records, 10,000 florins a year at a time when the average salary was about 450. <clears throat> Yet researchers at Salzburg's International Mozarteum Foundation say that his widow barely had enough money to bury him, that he owed thousands in debts to his tailor, his cobbler, his pharmacist, and to everyone else around him. So he was he was actually buried in a grave where the the deal was that after ten years they could dig you up. I don't know what they did with you then, but they could sell that space to someone else. Oh my! So if you if you hadn't decayed in that time, you know they would just plop someone else in there. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that's where you ultimately landed up getting up. But here's my multiple choice is a bit of a cheat because I, I want to know which of these facts about Mozart is a lie. Oh. Yeah. He was married to a woman named Constance Weber, with whom he had six children. But he'd first dated her older sister, Aloysia. He was an active Freemason. He was actually christened Johannes Chrysostomus Wolfgangus Theophilus Mozart, but preferred to call himself Amade. He was poisoned to death. There are no surviving examples of compositions by Mozart for the trumpet, and scholars believe that this is because he was afraid of it. Which of those facts is a lie? Wow. You've given me about five or six five, facts. Five, I think, yeah. Sweet. Five. I love those. They're all jolly interesting. All right. So I already know one of them is 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 true. So, yeah. so which he, one is that? Uh, he was a Freemason. He was a Freemason. He was yeah. indeed an active Freemason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so do you want to hear the others again? Yes, please. Yeah, he was married to a woman named Constance Weber, mm. with whom he had six children, but he first dated her older sister, Aloysia. That's one fact. Huh? Yeah, he was actually christened Johannes Christostomus Wolfgangus Theophilus Mozart, but preferred to call himself Amade. Mm. He was poisoned to death. Mm. There are no surviving examples of compositions by Mozart for the trumpet, and scholars believe that this was because he was afraid of it. Wow, man. Jeepers. I, 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 I think I... I think the Constance again rings a bell. And isn't that funny that um, Oscar Wilde, potentially, yeah. his wife was Constance, yeah. was Wolfie's wife, Constance, uh, rings a bell. Because I'm a huge fan of the movie, but the movie is not necessarily... Historically. That, no, it's a yeah. great movie, but it's not historically. Yeah, accurate. and that's why I also was sad when I saw that the movie portrayed him as dying a pauper and it's true that he had that sort of pauper's funeral mm. but was he really so no that that, that bit that bit is fact right like that bit that bit what i yeah. just told you about that is fact to establish yeah. him it, as true. deserving to belong on this podcast yeah yeah, uh, yeah my I'm, my multiple choices all just right those trumpet other things, yeah. trumpet trumpet uh okay and name and constance and poison to death poison to death not true 
uh, the Salieri thing, you know, that was also quite dramatic. So I don't know, eh, Poison to Death? No, I don't think so. Uh, the Trumpet, I don't recall. I, I love his music, but I'm not that technically clued up on it. But I... I can tell you there are no trumpet pieces that survive of his. Yeah, I can tell you that is a fact. scared of it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and people and the scholars say that apparently he was af I, like literally afraid of the, of yeah, the trumpet. Yeah, I can. Okay, cool. I think that is true. The poison? No, I don't think. And his name? I think that is true. Amadeus. And no, no, no. The so wife. his name is Johannes, Chrysostomus, Fulgangus, Theophilus Mozart. There's no, there's no Amadeus. There's no Amadeus. Sure. So he, he wanted to be called. Um, yes, I think the one that's a lie is the poison to death. So you know that the, the theory that he's poisoned to death is is probably the most popular theory as to his <laughs> death, right? But let me let me take it let me take it like here's the thing, right? Shit. So so, so uh, he was married to a woman named Constance Weber with whom he had six children is absolutely true. Only wow. two of those children actually survived into oh, adulthood. And he did, in fact, date her older sister, Eloisa. He mm. was a Freemason, as you said. Yep. Um, there are no surviving examples of compositions by Mozart for the trumpet. Scholars do believe that this is because he was actually afraid of it. Um, mm. The trumpet concerto K47C, there's, there's, rec there's mention of it in documentation. Um, and they say that it's a trumpet concerto uh, by Wolfgang, as Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, but apparently it's lost forever if it ever existed. Ah, yeah. Um, if you if you look up kind of any Mozart compositions uh, with the trumpet, they're all by his father. Um, uh -huh. So yeah. Um, now we're on to the the other two. Um, so he was poisoned to death is in fact the most popular theory about him and, and it gained a lot of popularity because of the movie you know, in which Salieri yes. seemingly poisons him to death but Salieri and him historically may not have known each other at all well and oh. if they did there's no antagonism evident at all in, in their relationship um, one of the reasons why poisoning is considered uh, an option is because he had so many contradictory symptoms. You know, there were there was there were symptoms and symptoms and symptoms that he gets listed as having, but but none of them actually you know, we can't look back on it and say, Well, this is this sickness now. You know, a lot of people who died, you know, the mad King George, for instance, we can look at his symptoms and we can say, Oh, he definitely he had this. Mm -hmm. You know, he had porphyria. Okay. Um, in this case, we, we can't. We look at the symptoms and we go, We don't know what that is. So some people have proposed that it could be poison, and since the movie the poisoning example has become even more popular. But that is, in fact, the lie. Because ah. officially, yeah, officially, scholars have said you can't say it's poisoning. Ah. It is, is, yeah, his death is still an official mystery. So he was actually christened Johannes Christostomus Wolfgangus Theophilus Mozart. Wow, and he liked the, the name Amadeus. And he called himself Amadi, yeah. Amadi. He called himself Amadi. He liked his friends to call him Amadi, yeah. That's a, and I nailed it. That's you amazing. nailed but it. But I do love it. Wolfie. Good I love finish. the movie and I love his music very much. When I need to really focus, uh, um, and and focus on a thing and drown out some some noise, I put on on YouTube. Greatest hits. Yeah, whatever. Russian woman scraping things on the <laughs> microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ASMR videos. All oh, Ryan, you pervert. Anyway, let's hear, your, let's hear your multiple yes. choice. Let's wrap this bad so boy up. When I was a young boy, there was a mini series on TV um, and uh, uh, heard of a woman called Barbara Hutton. She was a she was a socialite. Socialite, yeah. yes. I don't so, know very much about her. I'll be honest. Yeah. She comes from I, I don't know if it's Woolworths, but the family name was Woolworth, and oh. they ran a five and dime. You know what that is? I know it's from a Prince song. Working part yeah, time yeah. and a five and dime. And, and Brian Adams. Put my first real Little six string. string. Bought it at the five and dime. Yeah. All right. Look at you. So yeah. it's Prince and Brian Adams use five and dime in their lyrics. Yeah, you Woolworth. learn so much from what the fact podcast. <laughs> Woolworth would have to be a British company, right? The Woolworths brand. Sure. Yeah, but the the de that's that's definitely the name because this is multiple choice time. Okay. So that that was um, her inheritance. A uh, bit of a sad life. Socialite. Mother died at the age of four. She discovered it. Dead mother. Uh, father was very busy businessman, so she was raised by the governess, 
and um, and inherited in 1930 in the Great Depression, inherited uh, in total 50 million U.S. dollars, making her one of the richest women in the world. She did die penniless in the late I just 70s. I remember she was married to a famous actor, and I want to say, is this going to ruin your fact? Uh, I want to say fine. Cary Grant. You are fucking clever. Yes, it was. Um, and um, what else would I say about her? Yes, yeah, so her debutante's ball, you know, her matric farewell yeah. cost 60000 US dollars in 1930 in the middle of the Great Depression. She has an 18th birthday party for 60,000. So the press went 60,000. 60,000 US dollars. I couldn't one even have a party only. now at 60,000 dollars. That's madness. Okay. That's madness. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, shame. Tragic life. Uh, tragic life. Bit of booze, bit of drugs, bit of playboys. Uh, she married uh, seven times. Sure. Here's my fact. How many of these? Husbands were European nobility. Was it zero? <laughs> Was it one? Was it three? <laughs> four? <Was it> three? <laughs> three, four, or seven? All seven. Well, obviously, Cary Grant is not, oh, you is not sure British nobility, that? right? So, is not European nobility. So, we can rule him out. I believe. So I got and zero, this is, one, this is, three this is another thing I know about it, right? So here's another thing I know about it. I believe she paid out cash on every single one of her divorces except to Cary Grant. So wow. I think, I think if she was married to any European nobility, she wouldn't have had to have paid out cash to them, surely. And this was like the Albanians, so you could buy bazookas. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Like, I... Yeah, I'm going to say none. I'm going to say, did you, was that one of the options? Yeah, none. Zero, yeah. one, three, or four. Okay, I'm going to say none. Or huh. seven, yeah. Well, well, well. The answer is... It is actually four. Really? Four of them were European nobility. And she paid out cash to European nobility. Yeah, no, it's it's very, 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 very sad. The whole thing is, is just so bloody sad. Um... The indeed you were right about Cary Grant. That's what alerted me to the whole mini series, because a very dramatic one by the when we were like ten or eleven years old. Yeah. And then my gran was, oh, one of her husbands was Cary Grant, very handsome actor. Oh yes. really? Okay. And uh, then on toward uh, the end of her life on her deathbed, Cary and her still remained good friends. So he was a real gentleman, and uh, and all that. But um, the European husbands, holy guacamole! But before I tell you about them, so there were four. Um, there was actually five nobility, but the one was nobility from Laos. Do you know that country? Yes. It's Asian. Near Cambodia. Yes. And so, Vietnam. Yeah, she married him in Tangiers or something. Uh, just met him and married him. And then they were all a little bit bastardish. But here's the, the what I liked about the one husband is... Um, hang on, hang on. I think the thing is, once you've had seven husbands... It's not the husbands who are bastards, right? <laughs> like once you, like I think finally, definitively, if you are the person who has seven marriages, you, you cannot go around telling people that all of your exes were the dicks. Mm -hmm. I think there comes a point <laughs> when you've had a certain number of marriages where you are the dick and you need to start saying to yourself, actually, I'm something of a puss. <laughs> <laughs> there has to, how many marriages is that? Is it two? Is it three? Is it four? Yeah, is it seven? Seven. So, so yeah. F f so, five were nobility, but four were European nobility because of Laos. Uh, and then there's Cary Grant, number six. And then the last one didn't particularly have a title. But one of the dudes, uh, I've got the little fact here, just of one of the dudes. Hutton left California and moved to Paris, France, before acquiring a palace in Tangier. Uh, Hutton then began dating Igor Trobetskoy, an expatriate Russian prince of very limited means, but world renowned. In this, this is in, interesting Hang on, about but him. Russia isn't isn't Europe. God, that is. Damn it. Well, it's in the Europe. It's now in the. It was in the. Ah, yeah. The, did yeah. they play in the UEFA Champions League? That's all. That oh, oh yeah, no, that's okay. fine. No, yeah, no, 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 you have absolutely everything's fine. <laughs> 
The fact <laughs> checks out, Ryan. Soccer. Thank goodness for so the Champions League you check. and Eurovision Song Contest. Ah, oh, do they do they compete yeah, with they Eurovision? Sing in the Eurovision? No, then it's song pull that pull in. Uh, listen to this. Uh, in the spring of 1948 in Zurich, Switzerland, she married him. His name again is because uh, this is fascinating. Igor Trobetskoy. You're right. Marries him, Zurich, Switzerland, 1948. That year. He was the driver of the first Ferrari to ever compete in Grand Prix motor racing when he raced in the Monaco Grand Prix. Huh. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like marrying <laughs> Mick Schumacher. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and so she's married, she married a Danish baron who beat her and had a kid with her. And then she married another German sort of thing. Uh, and um, yeah, there were four European nobilities you think oh, the you would one learn your lesson, right? You know, one European nobility, fine, it's an honest mistake. Two European nobilities. Mm. Ooh, Four. The first yeah. one is you know, a bad one. Fool right? me twice. Yeah. <laughs> fool me thrice. <laughs> Fool the, me the, four times. The the first one is is a it could be a movie all on its own. It's a very cruel case of like family manipulation because it was the Georgian uh kind of uh marriers, they called okay. them. And uh, the the sister helped the brother sort of seduce her oh. and then, you know, caught sounds, them in the... It sounds like a cluster of assholes, right? Yeah, it sounds yeah, like, like everyone the, involved it's like the Kardashians. is assholes. Yeah, like, well, yeah, they exactly. are from that. Exactly. The Kardashians are from where? Not Azerbaijan. They're from... Kazakhstan. Ka no, Kazakhstan, no. Oh, yeah. He's, this is my wife. I this think he's wife. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, no, but it sounds like it's a giant cluster of wealthy assholes. Is essentially her whole life was just all the money's gone now. It's fucking gone. You know how much diesel we could have pumped into Kula <laughs> Seaway. No man, we've got secondhand furniture. There's a there's a shop down the road here. Gwedi's gonna pull up with his truck. He's gonna load all the old benches on it. He'll fucking chuck them into into Madupi, and we'll be fine for the weekend. Do you know what you can do to raise money? All those beautiful Eastern Cape beaches. Just find the, the gemstones under there, man. Just take the truck and suck it up. Don't and don't say that because. East London is, is poorer now than you think it is. You can like people are going to listen to this. The rumor is going to spread, and people are going to dig up those beautiful beaches, uh, and it's yeah, going to be down to you. It'll be down to you. I love Thank those. you very much for joining us. Yes. Thank you. It's been Please lovely. Please click like, subscribe, tell your friends, share it on Facebook, uh, send us passionate love messages. Who knows? You may get lucky, and Ryan may marry you. Yes, and take us not from riches to rags, <laughs> but from rags to riches. Which Brilliant. may be an episode soon. Thanks yeah. for listening and watching. Yes, thank you very much. We'll chat you next time. Ciao, ciao.